Greetings family, welcome back to my channel. This video is my response video to the claims that were made by Chief X and Ankh of the Amon Ra squad. Okay family, in this video I'm going to provide irrefutable proof that the Egyptians were Africans and they actually were black people. And for the purpose of this discussion, I found a text by one of our sisters, and her name is Drusilla Dungy Houston. The title of the book is Wonderful Ethiopians of the Ancient Kushite Empire, 1926. There are four sections in the table of contents. Um, the first chapter, the empire's age and scope. The second chapter, Old Ethiopia, its people. The third chapter, Ancient Ethiopia, the land. And this, the next section is the Amazing Civilization of Ethiopia. Okay, actually there's a fifth section called Prehistoric Egypt. And so the fifth section is what I'm actually going to read. And the fifth section is called Prehistoric Egypt, the land of wonders. Okay, the native name of Egypt was Kem, the black land. The name came not so much from the color of the soil as the hue of the inhabitants, in other words, the color of the people. Egypt was called the gift of the Nile because lower Egypt was formed out of soil brought down by the mighty river. Without the Nile, Egypt would be but a desert. The ancient peoples seemed to know more about the sources of the Nile than later nations. In our age, Livingston explored the branches of the White and Blue Nile far into the highlands of the equator. The land through the ages has been raised by the deposits left by each annual overflow. Failure of the river to rise means drought and famine. At the time of overflow, Egypt is a vast sea with our cities on the tops of continuous natural mounds. Numerous canals traverse the country connecting the natural channels. Egypt was inhabited in ancient days by two races or two distinct divisions of one race. Ancient records all testify that the ruling class in those times was the Ethiopian. They founded the powerful priest caste, as in the upper echelon of society. This priesthood included the judges, physicians, astrologers, architects. In a word, they united within themselves all the highest culture and the most distinguished offices of the land. In brackets, biblical literature. Calumet testifies that from ancient accounts and from all recent research, Culture and civilization spread into Egypt from the south and especially from Mero. Egypt, ruled at first by several contemporary kings, was finally united into one great kingdom. A priesthood seemed to have governed the land. The head of the state was a priest. The sacred books of the Hindu speak of an old race that came down from upper Egypt and peopled the delta. They mentioned the mountains of the moon and the Nile flowing through Barabra. Herodotus, the Greek, says in his second book, They say that in the time of Menes, all Egypt except the district of Thebes was a morass, and that no part of the land now existing below Lake Myris was then above water. To this place from the sea is seven days' passage up the river. Diodorus Siculus says in Book 3, The Ethiopians say that the Egyptians are a colony drawn out of them by Osiris, and that Egypt was formerly no part of the continent, but a sea at the beginning of the world, and that it was afterwards made land by the river Nile. This testimony is corroborated by geology. 
Rennell, after scientific investigation, says, The configuration and composition of the lowlands of Egypt leave no room to doubt that the sea once washed the base of the rocks on which the pyramids of Memphis stand, the present base of, base of which is reached by the inundations of the Nile at an elevation of 70 or 80 feet above the meridian. How remote must be the period when Egypt was not the gift of the Nile? Renan declares that Egypt had no infancy because its first colonists had been civilized in Ethiopia. And I'm not sure about the pronunciation of this, but it's spelled S-A-Y-C-E. This is another author being cited, but Sace or Sace thinks Egypt did not begin with Menes. That when Abraham went down in Egypt 4,000 years ago, the origin and meaning of the Sphinx was lost in mystery. Now this is an important point because what they're basically saying is that there was a, pe there was a period of time 4,000 years ago when even the citizens of Egypt did not have the full understanding of what the Sphinx and pyramids meant. Okay, but the reading continues. The Sphinx and the pyramids were symbols of some form of religion of the old race. Baldwin quotes from Diodorus Siculus, The laws, customs, religious observances, and letters of the ancient Egyptians resembled the Ethiopians the colony still observing the customs of their ancestors. Egypt in later days affirmed that they and their civilization came from black tribes of Punt. Some scholars seek to derive Egyptian civilization from some oriental source. There is evidence that the culture of Egypt was not developed in Egypt from their traditions and their earliest remains. It did not come from the north or the east, but must have been imported from the south for as Budge affirms, Egyptians had all the characteristics of an African race. I think that's Wallace Budge. But in continuation, Sergi shows that the discoveries of Flinders Petri and De Morgan prove that prehistoric Egypt was not influenced by any Oriental civilization. The primitive people of, of Egypt, as, received, as revealed by archaeology, dressed in skins and used rude stone implements of the Stone Age men. They lived in mud and reed butts and hunted wild animals. We do not add any such rude beginnings for the race of Sudan. From these people of Punt came Kushite colonists bearing the children of Mizraim, knowledge of copper, bronze, cereals, oxen, sheep, goats, and brick making. The historic Egyptians rose probably from the union of Aborigines and the invaders. Sais again says that the ancient Egyptians had the elongated type of skull. With the intermixture of later times, the heads of the Egyptians have widened. The race of the day has returned to the Aboriginal mud hut on the bank of the Nile. In the, in the days of Egyptian supremacy, the cranial formation was Ethiopian. James Henry Breasted, world-famous archaeologist, discovered in Egypt the studio of an Egyptian sculptor of 1400 BC. It was called the House of the Chief Sculptor, sculptor Thutmose. All the portraits were remarkable in that they were unmistakably African. Okay, let me repeat that. James Henry Breasted, spelled B-R-E-A-S-T-E-D, world-famous archaeologist, discovered in Egypt the studio of an Egyptian sculptor of 1400 BC. It was called the House of the Chief Sculptor, Thutmose. All the portraits were remarkable in that they were unmistakably African. Okay, family, so we have more proof. I'll read a bit more as I see this video is becoming a little lengthy. But in continuation, the early population of Thebes was Nubian. The reign of Menes was no nearer our time than 4000 BC. One of the temple records call him a Theban. Thebes was settled from Meroe, M-E-R-O-E, -E, 
Menes had, had been a priest of Upper Egypt, the older of the two countries. He made a change in the channel of the Nile. Many ages of civilization had preceded him. Bunsen believed that the time preceding Menes was greater than since. Was greater than since. Lepius says, under the fourth dynasty, six thousand years ago, the nation had approached the highest development at which we find her, of which the ruins still bear witness. The, the admirable system of monumental writings showed its highest perfection in the oldest ruins. This certainly indicated a long previous development. This was the age when Egypt was under the domination of the Ethiopians. The farther back we go, the more the farther back we go, the more perfect the art and purer the ideals. The ancient temples were almost covered with inscriptions. So universal was education that even workmen wrote upon the stones. Chronology as we have computed it makes no allowance for the many ages through which Egypt must have passed to have reached the high stage of culture which she had obtained at the dawn of recorded history. The chronology of Berossos, Mantheo, and the Hindu sages include ages of which other races possess no history and seem incomprehensible to us. These were the Kushite races, the first men and bring over a record of ages preceding the deluge. Their chronology is backed by the findings of science, which has shown that the earth is older than the puny period allowed by Usher's chronology. The Bible said that a thousand years with our God is as a day. Examination of prehistoric culture reveals that languages complex systems of religion and astounding architectural achievements which appear when the curtain of history was lifted are proof, are proof that the earth is older than we perceive. And so family, there's more of the chapter that I have not read but I think throughout the various scholarly citations, the names of the scholars are included in the text, we can see that even ancient scholars persons of antiquity knew that Egyptians actually came forth from the Ethiopians and that there was unmistakable similarity between their language, the written language, their culture and customs and religion. It was corroborated by even the Hindu sages, Hindu history, who have all spoken of an old race. Okay, and so it is no question that Ethiopia, Ethiopia has seen countless millennia of history. And Egypt, although it was invaded in recent history, had a very voluminous history prior to even the first foreigner enter, entering the land. And I think the important point what this text is really raising is the fact that they are saying when the curtain of history was lifted, they find Egypt was at the highest zenith of the high culture. So in other words, if the oldest remains that they have examined show Egypt at the highest of its high culture, this would mean that it had numerous millennia of history prior to this in order to reach that stage of development and in advancement okay family but what is made abundantly clear is that they were black Ethiopian people I will follow up with part two of this text I have another section that I would like to illuminate for my subscribers but let me know your thoughts about the reading in the comments below one love